you most probably clicked on this video because you have heard of GPT-4 and want to try it out. But like many people, you don't have access to ChatGPT+. Not only I'm going to show you how to access GPT-4, but how to compare it with other models which are not publicly available, such as the cloud from Anthropic. But before that, a big milestone for the channel. We just crossed 50,000 subscribers in just over two months. This is just unbelievable for me. I started this channel on January 14th, 2023 and got my first subscriber on the 18th. I'm simply blown away by the support and can't thank you enough for making this journey so special. Your comments, likes and shares keep me motivated to bring you the best possible content. Thank you for being part of our journey and here is to the next 50k. So back to the video. If you go to the playground on OpenAI's website and you look for GPT-4, it is not available there for free users. But there is a website which actually gives you access to GPT-4. It's called nat.dev. So first you need to sign up using your uh, email address and phone number. You actually need both of them. So just go ahead and sign up. Once you sign up and log in, you will see an interface like this. So they have a playground, then a compare, and then there's a link to a Discord server. So before exploring the platform, a quick shout out to uh, Nat Friedman. He's actually the one who made this uh, website available to everybody, but you might want to have a look at his uh, cloud bill. Just make sure uh, you use this website responsibly and don't exploit it. It's simply for comparison of uh, different models and how their output looks like. Uh, so if you come here uh, to the uh, right hand side, there are a number of models available. So for example, uh, these are the open source models, then some from Hugging Face. Then for example, you have the Cloud Instant uh, from Anthropic or Cloud 1.2. Uh, some models from Core here. Uh, and then you have the OpenAI models, including uh, GPT-4. Uh, this is ChatGPT. And some other, for example, the Text DaVinci uh, 3 models as well. So you can s simply type in whatever query you have. It's very similar to the OpenAI Playground. Submit it and you will get a response. But I'm really interested in comparing different models. So you can come to the, the Compare tab. And then here you can select the models that you want to compare. So for example, I have selected uh, the Cloud Instant uh, version 1.0. So let's say, let's remove that. Okay, so I want to select 1.2. This is ChatGPT, Cloud 1.2, OpenAI, and I think they also have uh, both the Llama uh, and Alpaca models as well. So let's see, let's look at, uh, check for Llama. Right, so Llama 65 billion parameter model as well, okay? Uh, and then you have a few options that you can set, um, so you can play around with those. So what I want to do is I want to compare these four models uh, for different tasks, including a programming task, uh, use it as a prompt generator for mid journey. All right, so the first test that I want to do is to run this prompt. Uh, so this is one that was shown in the demo of uh, GPT-4. So explain the plot of uh, Sandrina in a sequence where each word has to begin with uh, the next letter in the alphabet from A to Z without repeating any letters. So let's see how good these models are at doing this task, all right? So all you have to do is write your prompt and then click submit. And the great thing about this is you actually see uh, what's uh, the speed, so how many characters per uh, second are being generated. Now in this case, uh, so ChatGPT definitely did not follow the um, instructions at all because you already see that after Cinderella, so that's like A, and then it's supposed to be a letter starting with a word starting with letter B, but it completely ignored it. Same for the cloud model, but if you look at GPT-4, so it's a have like abused beauty in Cinderella, so like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and it seems to be have um, actually followed it pretty accurately. So that that's pretty nice. So this shows you that you are actually using uh, GPT-4 and the Llama model, it's still trying to come up with something. So I'm going to stop this. That's just one quick comparison that we did. Okay, now let's look at the advanced um, reasoning capabilities. So for this, to compare uh, these different models, I'm going to uh, copy the prompt from 
GPT-4 website. And let's go back and uh, let's paste it here. All right, so if we pasted it. Uh, I One thing I noticed is on the website, if you simply copy something and try to paste it, use it control, control C, it doesn't seem to be work. But okay, let's submit this. And let's see uh, what the response is. The answer is supposed to be uh, noon to 12.30. So that's the only time when you have all three of them free. Uh, so let's see, chat GPT, there are two possible windows w uh, within which all three participants are available, noon to 12.30 and through. Okay, so this is actually incorrect because uh, one of the person is not uh, free at this time. Uh, I actually did the calculations. So what does Cloud says? Let's break it down step by step, right? So uh, it's looking at the availability of everybody. Okay, so it's actually able to figure this time out, okay? And then here's the response from uh, uh, GPT-4 as well. So this is actually the correct answer. So it still, I think, got it wrong. But if you run it again, you might see a different answer. And uh, the Lama model uh, is still trying to process this, so it's not really coming up with anything. So let's stop this. Now, the real beauty of this website is actually to compare these models as well as uh, understand the effects of these parameters. So you can actually play around with these. I might do a, another video on this. Now, let's see how these, you know, how good these models are at following uh, instructions in terms of if you want to create a prompt for something like mid-journey. Uh, one thing I did was I actually replaced um, the Llama model with this uh, command large x nightly uh, from Cohere uh, because that wasn't doing anything at all. All right, so um, here I'm defining the structure of what a, a mid-journey prompt should look like, right? So it, it's supposed to have a subject of the image, then uh, five to seven descriptive keywords, and camera type and uh, some other parameters that I want to look at. Uh, I found uh, the basis for this prompt of, uh, on the internet and then modified a few things in there, right? And then I'm asking it based on the above structure, generate five prompts for the following subject. So now I'm going to define this subject. Let's say uh, the subject is going to be classic cars. And one thing you might have noticed so far is uh, it doesn't have the it doesn't have the ability to converse, right? Um, so it's very different from what you expect from a chat GPT, right? So you, you, here you can simply run a command and get an output because it's simply uh, a tool to compare the output from all these different models. All right, so it seems like uh, all the models have uh, generated the results. So I'm gonna uh, copy each one of them and let's see how the results look like in mid-journey. All right, just one thing to notice, uh, the Cohere uh, model actually didn't return anything. It simply rewrote the structure or formula that we gave it. ChatGPT uh, gave us a prompt. Uh, one thing was that um, the aspect ratio I'm defining in the width to height, right? So I think I might need to actually add the dash dash uh, AR here. Okay, so let's look at the results. Okay, so here are the results. This is based on the prompt that was generated by GP, chat GPT. The second one is based on uh, the cloud from Anthropic. And the third one is based on uh, the one generated by GPT-4. So th these all looks pretty good. Uh, the, the, the goal of this uh, comparison was simply to look at the ability of these models um, to generate prompts for uh, AI image generators, not really to compare uh, the output results. But all three of them are able to do the task pretty nicely. You might have seen that uh, both ChatGPT and GPT-4 were able to code. So let's look at a very simple example and see what the output is going to be. So I'm asking it write a code for a website that has multiple tabs, and each tab displays a random joke. Let's see well, what these models comes up with. Now, all four of the models were able to generate code, but only uh, ChatGPT and uh, GPT-4 were actually able to uh, kind of explain it a little bit, so it did put some explanation uh, within um, the code blocks. Right? So for example, it says that this creates a simple websites with three tabs. When you click on a tab, it displays a random joke from the jokes array. 
Okay, so let's look at actually the uh, final output of each of these codes. All right, so the first website that we are looking at that is from the Coher uh, model. Uh, it did put a couple of links, but they don't seem to be working. The next is the clone model. Instead of tabs, it actually put three, I think, different links and simply displayed uh, all three jokes here. So it, does, it doesn't really follow the instruction that we provided. Here's a chat GPT. Uh, it did put two tabs, but the jokes are missing. <laughs> and uh, GPT-4, so it actually followed all the instructions. So there are tabs. Then you have uh, one joke. If you click on tab two, so it generates uh, another joke. Tab three, uh, uh, another joke. And if I actually um, click on these multiple times, so each time, it will generate, uh, it will pick a random joke from that array of jokes that it, it has. Okay, so I selected chat uh, GPT-4 and let's ask it what's the name of the model uh, that it is currently running. Let's see what uh, it thinks. Okay, all right, good. So it knows that it's uh, GPT-4. That's a pretty good indication because some people uh, actually had trouble with it. When was it last? updated let's see is the language i don't have the real-time information please refer to open the eye okay it seems to be actually remember the context let's see what is the uh cut off update in your training you might encounter this because um in the background it's using gp 4 um api uh and there seems to be a limit on it uh, because of the plot that I showed you, like how much money it's costing uh, the developer. So it seems like I was wrong when I said in the in the beginning that you cannot really uh, chat with it. Uh, I think in the playground, I mean, you can potentially uh, chat with it. So check it out, have fun with it, experiment with it. Hope you like the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.